how detailed should your thumbnails be? I think this is a good question because it brings up another series of questions. Firstly, how as an artist do you go about getting the ideas from your head onto the page and then into a finished image? But secondly, how as an artist do you actually include other people in that same process. Often when we're working as professional artists, we need to include other people, either art directors, people in our production chain, clients that we're working with, people who have essentially paid us to create an image. It's worthwhile including them in the process. And this is where a lot of professional practices like thumbnails, preliminary roughs, and all these different stages come from. So. What I want to do in this video is try and unpack a lot of these ideas and share with you some examples from my own professional career and also my own personal work and just give you a bit of information so hopefully you can try and get your head around this question. How detailed should my thumbnails be? All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. If you want to learn more about illustration or picture making, you can check out my free illustration mini workshop. This charts my journey, going from someone who look really wasn't that good at drawing or art to becoming a professional artist, being published. I discuss topics such as how to get more detail and polish in your work, how to think about composition, creating thumbnails for your scenes, as well as a few ideas surrounding how to think about getting professional work. It's free and the link will be in the description. So if that's something you're interested in, go check it out. Okay, so firstly, what I wanna do is outline, I guess, what I think are the best practices and what will lead to the best results if you are working as a professional artist. And I think this often talks to why we need to have more of a fully featured process where you do have detailed thumbnails, you do have roughs, and you include people in the process. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. The first is just that most of the time, people who you're working with aren't gonna be fully visually literate. A good art director will obviously be good, will be visually literate. A good lead will be visually literate, but not every client you're gonna work with is gonna understand what a sketch is. So if we look at just that basic problem, here I've got some different examples of cover processes for the comic book project that I've been working on at Star Atlas Core. Now it's worth mentioning that in my sort of instance, I work with people who are pretty good at understanding covers and we have a good working relationship. So I'm gonna show you some different things from that project. And this is where a lot of what you have to understand is that this really comes down to one thing, which is the creative process involving other people in the creative process and making sure that you have a good working relationship so that things basically aren't gonna come back at you. But I have worked with a variety of different techniques on that project uh, as I guess the trust has been built up and uh, as we've sort of been under deadline pressure. And here you can see we've got uh, more of like a traditional sort of fully featured process here and I've created a color rough. And what you can see is that this little sort of thumbnail thing, which is pretty simple, pretty basic, is very, very close to what the finished image looks like. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter how you come up with this thumbnail. The key is that it represents more or less exactly what the finish will look like. Now, we change the colors a little bit, but overall, the general idea is very similar. And so what you're gonna, I guess, get is that most people who are gonna be able to see this and say, yes, this seems good. If they end up with this finished image here, they're gonna feel like, hey, look, you know, that's kind of what I asked for. You know, that's sort of what I signed up. It, it's really all there. There's some minor changes, but for the most part, it is what it is. Now, it's worth noting that with the line and color style, if we look at this middle image here, this may be quite tricky for a lot of people to actually pass if they're not visually literate. Um, I don't actually often hand this up even. Um, and if I do, I often, if it's a client who needs that stage, I often put some very sort of simple flat colors to separate the different elements out because it can be quite tricky for people to really understand. In this case, I don't need to do that. 
But what I want to do is just show you uh, a different sort of cover process that had a much sort of rougher thumbnail. Now this is closer to how I would work for myself. And in this case, um, I needed to get these covers done fairly quickly. So I just did a really rough thumbnail. And this is what I need in order to move to the next stage. And I kind of had in my head an idea of where this was going. But what you can tell is that obviously no one has any idea how I'm thinking of tonally or color wise kind of separating out these characters. I kind of have an idea sort of in my head, but I'm just going to wing it and I'm going to come up with something interesting and hopefully it's, you know, we all just have to trust that I know what I'm doing. And I guess the danger here is if you're not working with um, a good collaborative partner who understands you, who trusts you, then this is probably going to go pear-shaped because someone is going to okay this sketch and then they're going to imagine something different. And probably even if I handed up something in the middle, you can see with my particular style, this isn't necessarily going to make that much sense. When we see the finish, then you can see, oh, okay, we have the graphic nature. We've got sort of a red and blue color scheme. There's a lot of contrast there. We got lots of depth and parallax, right? Hopefully this cover kind of works to a certain degree. It has some impact. It has narrative, but you know, this is just not visible and, and understandable by most people. So that's where you typically need to have something that much better represents what you have in mind for the finished image. Now, that should be like, look, that dude, that's super obvious. But I think what is also not as obvious, and I'll, I'll just show you a few, we've got a few other little sort of examples here, just so we got some, some variety. What's some, what's also not quite as obvious if you haven't done a lot of professional work is that you, you also need to get people to buy in to the general creative process and the creative choices that you make. So the other thing is that often when you're working with clients, like in this case, the, the brief I have is come up with some cover ideas because we do three of them per month and some people will have little ideas here and there. But basically, I am more or less given free reign to kind of come up with the ideas and we kind of, I pitch the ideas and it's like, yeah, that sounds good. Let, let's kind of keep rolling. But in a lot of cases, we're working with clients and people and art directors who have very specific needs. And in this case, what we need to do is maybe do a couple of different thumbnail ideation versions. And we'll show some examples of that as we sort of progress. Because what you need when you're working with people is to have them bought into the creative process. So as I kind of come up with different ideas for a cover, what you find happens is that maybe someone's idea doesn't quite turn out as you thought it would. You might all think it's going to turn out like this and we've got this great idea, but then we sort of actually put it down onto the page and look, you know, it it doesn't quite work out. And so if we're all there, we all have the ideas, we all put them down. And as, as the artist's job, it's our job to visualize those. That's a big part of what we get paid for. And we see that like, oh, this idea worked. This We all thought this was good. It turned out not to be such a good idea. You, you kind of get a good feeling and everyone's like, oh, okay, we're all on the same page. We understand why this worked, why this didn't. And then we move to the next stage. And then again, people might have feedback but we're all kind of together, right? We all are on the same team because we're involved in the same creative process. I'm sharing the steps along with people and we kind of become sort of bonded by the creative struggle. And what you, what you kind of find is that if you correctly include people in your creative process and you're working with people all in good faith, then... Um, you're going to get to the to the final stage where it's like, hey, you know, maybe it uh, like this was maybe a good example, right? Uh, it didn't quite um, didn't quite get that blue in there. I think because by the time I sort of put the blue in here, it was pushing a little bit out of gamut, and I know that wouldn't print that well. And I felt like if I sort of pushed the yellow again, I just felt that this would actually give us a stronger cover overall. So. And there was a couple of other things that I sort of tried here as well. I, I put, if you sort of look at the, the finish versus the, the thumbnail here, the thumbnail doesn't quite have this, this almost weird sense that he is a, maybe like a bit holographic or something weird is happening. We kind of put this blue gradient up there. There was these ideas that people had as they saw it, like, oh, it'd be cool if this. 
So the, the point is it doesn't look exactly like the thumbnail, but the process we go through and the way that people maybe see as we deviate from the thumbnail, there are reasons for that. Oh, it was out of gamut. The more you're involved in the process, the more people maybe I show them like, hey, here is it with the blue. See, it's out of gamut. Here's the one that I think would be good. Here's maybe another option for how we could, you know, just tweak the colors at the end. People are going to feel like, oh, okay, we're all on board. You've tried those different options. And at the end of the day, everyone's going to be happy. If you hand up something and it doesn't look like the finish, then people are often going to be like, well, why not? Right? Like, why, why didn't you do what you said you were going to do? So the more you involve people in the process, the better it's going to be. Now, the danger of giving someone a really rough thumbnail like this from a client perspective is that you're going to, maybe, maybe people are actually going to be okay with this. They're going to say, yeah, look, I trust you. And the, the problem is that as you sort of progress through, like if, if I show someone this thumbnail here on the left, and uh, it's just a super big rough drawing, right? It essentially is just a giant thumbnail, giant preliminary. And then I show them this line drawing here. The line drawing still isn't really selling it. They still don't really know what they're getting. And, and at this point, again, you might have someone who's very well-meaning, someone who maybe isn't super visually literate, but understands the creative process from other business um, executive functions. And they're like, look, I need to trust this person. You need to trust your team. And they're like, this person probably is going to have, you know, understand that, you know, maybe this is going to get better or whatever. But, th but then you kind of get to the finish. And, and because it's just maybe not what they had in mind, or maybe it's not the idea they communicated to you as the artist and you, you know, they think, oh, I, I'm having this idea. Can you draw this? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Here it is. All right. You know, here's the idea. And they're like, oh, okay. It's not kind of how I saw the idea, but maybe you understand what I mean. The, the reality is that in most cases, people don't understand what you mean. <laughs> and we need to communicate visually so that we do actually see the same thing. It's very easy for two people to have this talk like, yeah, you remember this thing like this and everyone always agrees until you see the finished visual result and then it all goes pear-shaped. So it's just important to understand that is why you typically have like a full creative process where you try and make sure, and I think this one's probably a good example, where the the thumbnail and the like the preliminary thing, again, I call this sort of a thumbnail. This is kind of what I mean. There's a very sort of quick little rough and uh, this looks almost exactly like this, right? It's, you could okay this, and then this almost looks exactly the same. And, and again, I think having the ability to do that will make your sort of creative career options expand a lot because that is something that you need to be able to pull out of the hat if you're in a particular scenario where someone needs to okay something and it needs to be really important. Maybe it's gonna be a bigger marketing effort, whatever. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense. This is why we do a lot of thumbnails. We do iterations. We show people the rough, the lines, the color. It can be very frustrating in the beginning if you're used to working with your own, on, on your own to start including people in this way. But this is a major part of what being a professional artist is. And there's good reasons for it. And if you handle this well, you will find in general, you will have a much more harmonious, happy, creative working relationship with people. So a lot of those previous examples are for illustration style projects. Often though, we use the word thumbnail and we do a lot of sketching and thumbnailing if we're working in concept art. And I think this is often where we can get into trouble thinking about the same words being used in different scenarios and exactly what is sort of expected of you. So obviously in video games and concept design, we, we do a lot of super rough sketching. So here you can see some different sort of character ideas. And these are very much super rough little drawings, but they, they really sort of embody what to me is like the, the minimum viable product that you can hand up to someone at any given time. What is like a unit of work that is essentially as a concept artist, the least amount of effort I can put in while producing something that has the highest amount of value. And as concept artists, what we really are often trying to do is, is like perfect that balance. How can I quickly convey an idea and so that we can explore the maximum volume of ideas and be as creative as possible without 
being too ambiguous. And, and that's where concept art, we, we spend a lot of time ideating and developing processes and styles that are rough, but there's enough information there that you can kind of understand it and you could pot potentially present it to other people. So I think the difference that you typically have when you're working in concept design is that these ideas, these little sketches that we're showing here, yes, they need to be shown to art directors and people who are visually literate, to leads and things, and, and you could certainly explore at a rougher stage than this if you're working next to someone. Normally, I'm working freelance, so I don't do a lot of that. But often what we're doing is we're creating these kind of little thumbnail, um, you know, sort of silhouette drawings for things like characters. And again, I'm, I'm going to move on to illustrations for, for concept art as well. But I thought I'd sort of show these as well as a, as a good example of kind of the kind of stuff we do. And again, this is refining that minimum viable design, right? What, what can I put in? How much effort can I put in without, you know, sort of going overboard, adding too much detail. And so we spend a lot of time practicing drawing fast, but sort of still getting stuff loose. But as I was saying, you will frequently have people who are going to be shown these who are maybe going to be, they might be part of level design, um, character design, they might be part of different sort of projects. And, and they are going to be interested in art. That they're probably visually literate, but maybe you, you need to show them something that is actually pretty close to what the finished design is going to be. Um, just in terms of shape and like what's cool and what the ideas are behind it. So this is where we, we often, when we're working in concept art, we, we need to have something that is a, a good mix of being sketchy for us, but everything we create really has to be able to be shown to pretty much anyone and they need to be able to get some read on it. This has certainly been my experience. So here are some thumbnails for the illustrations that you're about to see. And again, this is a similar style of working where I need to develop an ability to create a sketch that maybe it's not exactly what the finish is going to look like, but it is enough so that someone can show it to a room full of other people who are working on the game. They can all discuss it and they're going to discuss it based on a lot of factors. Not all of them, not all of it is just going to be what is, what is good what is bad, right? What is, what is ugly? Um, you know, is this a good image they're, they're going to be thinking about, well, you know, maybe, maybe this would be a good gameplay scenario. Like maybe this, maybe this is something that really illustrates like a boss battle, right? Maybe we want to really get a feel for like, what are the mini bosses going to be? How big are these things? What's it going to be like to be playing the game? And, and there's a lot of different stakeholders essentially who are going to be part of these meetings so you kind of do need to make sure that when you're working in concept design in most cases that the things you present are going to be detailed enough that kind of anyone can look at it and have a, a at least a little bit of an idea of what it look, what it's meant to be so we we don't have to be super detailed but we often i think have to be a little bit more detailed than people are imagining now as i said you could certainly have a phase of the you know ideation process that is before this where it's a lot rougher you know you're just throwing ideas back and forth with your art director you know they come over they see you know how about this it's like really really super dirty sketches but in most cases it's just more efficient and better to be able to aim for something that is again it's as quick as you can possibly do it while being readable and, you know, anyone is going to be able to look at it and have at least some idea of what that is. I think that's the best thing you're going to find. If it's too rough, then, you know, and you can see some of these things are like very rough, but hopefully people can sort of get a bit of an idea of what's going on. And, uh, you know, we can sort of move it to the next phase if we need to. But if things aren't detailed enough, then people are going to okay things that are vague and we're not going to have clarity on the team. So, being able to explore all of these different ideas, even though none of them sort of get picked, right? These are different ideas of maybe there's a hunting aspect to the game, right? So, you know, here's like hunting special little sort of aquatic creatures in a stream with a bow. Here's the idea of, you know, maybe you've got your animal familiar. You're going and hunting different sort of animals. 
uh, here's another particular scenario, here's another scenario, right? Maybe you would sort of encounter a more sort of unique characters or these kind of like bigger uh, mini boss or boss style characters. So, you know, we, we need to be able to present this and these all need to be readable to a certain degree. But um, again, we can't spend too long on them. So this is where this idea of the concept art thumbnail, I think sort of really comes from. This is often what I'm sort of talking about. And the reason they need to be detailed is that there's not really much point producing, from my experience, anything that's less detailed than this because it doesn't function as a unit of production, or as a deliverable. It doesn't have a lot of value to the production chain if we're just sort of sketching rougher than this, essentially. The bottom line to think about with a lot of concept art is that we're just trying to explore with the least amount of detail possible. And I think this is something that we can carry across to a lot of the different advice that I'll give here, which is that you're often just trying to do whatever is useful, whatever provides value to the people that you're working with. And if you can do something quicker, then do it quicker because that means you can be more creative, you can come up with more options. But, you know, the creative process is messy. Sometimes we would do a bunch of these little rough sketches trying to get a feel for like, you know, how the character might be posed because that is going to they'll send that to the animators and the animators will say like, no way, <laughs> right? It's too complicated. It's going to cause problems. You know, that may be something that's very useful. Um, and then, you know, we might sort of think about, well, you know, how does this head articulate? How do these muscles work? So, you know, we do something a little bit more detailed. These little sketches are cool, but people will come back and say, yeah, it's kind of interesting, but I don't get how that's going to work. And different people from different technical um, areas of production will see this and they will see things that are important. They will maybe request like, hey, what's going on here? How are we going to do this? You know, is this head going to be able to articulate? Is it going to move? Are we going to need to model like way too many, um, you know, sort of muscular things that sort of don't exist or aren't sort of figured out? Uh, lots and lots of questions that would come up when you're creating something like a creature design. So all of these things are really just a matter of the, the minimum viable product that you can have when you're being creative. And again, I think for illustration, trying to come up with key shots, keyframe ideas, often we need to be very clear, very graphic. The drawing doesn't need to be good. If you've been doing this for 20 years, 30 years, your drawing will probably be better. You have a looseness, a fluidity to it. It doesn't have to be good. It just needs to be clear. And you need to be able to explore lots of different ideas. So everyone's sketches and the quality of them is going to be different. But fundamentally, you need to be able to have this ability to do something fairly quick and then be able to turn it into something that's, uh, again, a little bit more polished. That, that's really the fundamental unit of concept design. We are taking things that are sort of rough and we're just sort of working them up as and where and if we need. Most of those rough ideas get thrown away. But where we need to, we basically just sort of add information as we need. And in a similar way, a lot of these sort of super rough keyframes have a level of finish to them that is also the minimum viable product. These are very rough. They're very simple, but they do communicate an idea of what it might be like to encounter a creature like this in the game. Like what would it look like on screen? So again, these are a couple of examples of thumbnails from concept art, from my experience. And again, the reason that I think they need to have that particular level of finish. Now, the finish there, as I said, is clarity. They kind of just have to be clear what is there. And you maybe request it for more clarity. But again, we need a certain degree there before we're actually going to be able to have good conversations with other people about it. But yours may be you know, messier, right? It, it may not be as well drawn. They may be overworked. They may be a little bit, uh, again, you know, they might not be loose, but they need to be clear. Okay, so lastly, what I want to do is look at what you can create if you have a good sort of comfortable working relationship or the kind of thumbnails that you might be able to get away with if you're just working by yourself. Often, as artists, all you need is a way to kind of record your ideas. So here I've got a different type of process. And this is a situation where this is probably the type of thing that I would do if I was just working on my own. Or as I've sort of said before about working on the Star Atlas core comic book project, um, the people I'm working with uh, are very good collaboratively. And I feel like we've gotten to a good stage where we can kind of understand the process. So what I do in terms of thumbnails and storyboard is very, very basic. This is a sort of look at what the thumbnail looks like. 
and it's done on a sort of standard moleskin style book. Um, so, you know, probably one of the ones that's, you know, sort of the, I think the large size, but the large size isn't actually that large. And what I do is just a rough little stick figure style version of what's going on. Now, I'm still thinking about where all the characters are, what's happening with the action. But as you can tell, no one in their right mind is going to be able to really have any idea what I'm doing with these little drawings that I'm doing, right? They're so rough that, you know, unless you really have a good understanding of who the characters are, you're not going to be understanding what happens next. So this is a good example of here we got the thumbnail. Um, the way I put the words in is I just sort of have uh, notes and, right, if we sort of go back, that's kind of what it looks like. And this is a, a good example of what, what I can get away with because creating a really beautiful detailed storyboard is, is good and it might actually make the pages look a little bit better um, if they're sort of planned out more. But this the pace of this comic is a little bit more like uh, a manga um, or like a really fast sort of Western comic book in terms of the amount of sort of pages I need to produce and the other things that I do, right? Because essentially I do everything on this book. So often you have to match the style and the speed to the type of production workflow you're using. So here we've got those stages, right? I've got first stage, which is storyboard. People are okaying this, but really there's a lot of trust that I know what I'm doing. Now I do sort of often show this and, and get this sort of stage approved, but sometimes, um, you know, we just sort of move on. And, you know, this is where I'm taking that idea and creating, this would be the sort of pencil phase for me, which is still pretty rough but at least we have a good idea of what's going on. And, and this is kind of the, the finished version of that page. So here we go. We've got the different sort of stages of it that you can see. And I think this is a good example of, just bring that up a little bit so you can see but my head. Yeah, so this is a good example of the minimum viable sketch you can have to plan and move along. And in this case, it's so rough and it's like a crazy little thumbnail, but Often when we're working in comics or we've had a good working relationship, we figured these things out. Someone is able to look at the storyboard and I'll give you a little sort of hint extra of, of how I actually sort of handle and present this storyboard um, right at the end that sort of helps helps with this. I think it's actually quite sort of unique. Um, but this is kind of maybe all you need. And this sort of talks to, again, the way that you need to figure out what your process is. So this would be my process. I'm often like, here's a very rough little thumbnail sketch. And when I'm working on this type of high paced comic book project, you kind of just need to get going, right? You just need to draw the pages. Otherwise it can just drag on. It's not like a French European uh, BD, like Bon Destiné, where you get a week per page, right? We're, we're looking at, you know, a day per page, probably at the most, given the other things that we sort of have to do um, on this particular project. And again, you know, you just need to kind of get this rough thing there. And what you'll find is a lot of comic book editors, comic book writers, will have a good understanding of what these little sketches be. Or again, people I'm working with are very, very experienced art directors. They can see these sketches. They have a good understanding of what's going to be there. And if you're in a good working relationship, you people trust you, they know what you're doing. Um, and again, you're able to communicate what it's going to be like, then you can basically get away with, with murder, which is like what this is, right? This is like the, the worst sketch ever. You can barely tell what's going on. And, and here's the, the next thing. And it's like with some of these, it's like, well, th this isn't much about it, right? It, it's not, you know, if we sort of zoom up here, right? Whoop, if it Photoshop will sort of figure it out. Um, you know, it's not much better, right? It's pretty sort of chaotic. It, it, it's rough. There's not a lot of, there's it, we're barely sort of touching secondary form, but you know, it, it's sort of, there's enough there. So I'll just show you a few more sort of examples here of this, All right? Here's another one. Gives us an example of kind of what we're dealing with, All right? So if we zoom out there, you can see this is the same type of storyboard, rough idea. Then we take that and create a, a more sort of detailed version of it. And it is good to also, you know, have this as a phase where we, you know, sort of hand this around. People can spell check this at this stage. It's got all the text on there in the middle, um, much clearer than this. And at this point, we can sort of tweak the text if we want as we sort of progress. And, you know, this is sort of the finished result. But 
again, if you look at the finished result versus the sketch, uh, you know, uh, for a lot of people, they're not really even going to have any idea what, what that is or, or be able to tell like, ah, oh, you know, that turned into this. And again, I added up doing, I ended up doing a whole bunch of stuff. Like I got rid of two characters that were going to be behind this guy, right? That sort of disappeared. I put the ship in there. Um, you know, I sort of changed the composition a bit. But you can tell that the rough idea is there in, in all of these cases. And again, I made sure to put all the characters in there. And, and this was quite a complicated panel to draw. It's because there's so many little characters. But um, again, you know, no idea what this thing is actually going to look like. Um, and here's another one, right, where we sort of, uh, you know, have a, a pretty, pretty rough little thumbnail, right? Like, what is this? Who are these people? What's going on? Um, and I think on this page, you actually had a couple of other little sketches of, we were trying to think about like what this squid was going to be like, um, you know, what's the design like? And, and so I was sort of playing around with that on the page and here's my here's my little sketch and a lot of this sort of got designed on the page uh, i did some other sketches that are not here but yeah we kind of figured it out uh, but still here uh, you know some of this is pretty rough hard to really see you know like where's he looking what's going on you know what's going to happen it's only when you get to the finish that you really see what is going on but again a good example of the way that if you have a really good working relationship um, you can, you know, work out a process that's very efficient because that is something that provides value to the production chain. If we can get it more efficient, we can put more time into the finished work, more time into the writing, the coloring, all those other things. And um, again, you know, that's kind of how the process works. If there's changes to be made, it's a, it's a, it's a working relationship where we have the ability to do that and make tweaks. And often that's what happens. We get right to the end and change dialogue, change panels, you know, like what, whatever needs doing. It's a very sort of fluid um, collaborative environment. So hopefully that gives you, um, uh, you know, an idea about, you know, the different types of sketches you can do, different scenarios. And uh, again, I'll do a little quick of a sum up, but firstly, I want to do what I was said I was going to do, which is talk about how I actually present these, because I think this is is also a good sort of creative opportunity to, to look at the way you might go about adding clarity. So what I actually do is I have the whole storyboard for each episode is storyboarded out. But what I do is I actually use the YouTube setup that I have for recording courses and tutorials and things like that. And I use it to talk through the storyboard. So I say, this is page one. This is what's happening. This is what's happening in this page. This is what's happening in this page. This is the character. This is the expression they're going to have. Like, oh, we're going to have this squid mech, right? You know, here's the, uh, you know, Hirokano character, the little sort of furry um, character from Star Atlas and you know he's saying this and he's looking like this and then we got this squid mech and it's like coming down and we just sort of see these speed lines and here we've got uh, Brocco and he's just saying oh damn right you know and he's sort of looking up and uh, you know and then we got the squid mech right and it's just this is like the epic this is gonna don't worry I'm gonna make this the most epic um, splash screen of this cool squid mech thing not quite sure what it's gonna look like yet but you know ah, I'm thinking like this thinking like that and um, again it, combining some of the other skills I have from, from doing YouTube and making a lot of videos into being able to present a very, 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 very rough little sort of thumbnail there. So again, that's actually quite an efficient way to do it, especially if you're dealing with someone who's maybe experienced art director, um, which is what we sort of have, but, but maybe hasn't, you know, looked at, you know, a hundred thousand comic book uh, thumbnails, but I have worked with just quick back, go back to sort of face. Yeah, I, I have worked with a lot of really experienced comic book editors and writers, and, and they will be able to understand the most ridiculously rough thumbnails, right? So it's all a matter of who you're working with. What is the minimum viable product you can get in order to move the story forward? With a lot of story, as I said, a lot of editors or people who are writers who are working with, they might want to see a really early draft of the storyboard where we just kind of say like, let's just put this script together. I'm just going to rough it in. It's going to look super, super stick figure-ish. But, you know, they might want to see that and they may be, again, all about who you're working with. They may be able to see and understand what's going on and how their script is translated because the writer can see the pages to a certain degree themselves. An editor has probably seen more thumbnail sketches than you have, right? They, they've 
they they live and breathe little sketchy things and understanding what is this, how's this going to work. So if you're working with people who want that and that provides value into the production chain, you can maybe do the simplest little sketchy pages and maybe that's just a phase where you're like, okay, let's think about this here. Let's think about is there too much dialogue in this panel? Is there you know too much whatever here? Um, you know maybe we need to tweak it and maybe then you have another pass at it where you create more detailed roughs and at that pace at that phase it's more about thinking about drawing all of these things are to understand one fact which is that you as an artist can have whatever process you want that maximizes your creativity and allows you to get the ideas you have onto the page the process and the way you do that will define very much the style and the look and the experience you have creating but when you're working professionally, you need to think about what provides value to the people you're working with. In some cases, as I've shown, you may need to create a thumbnail slash preliminary drawing of the thing that looks exactly like the finished cover because that provides the most value. In some cases, like in concept art, we create these kind of weird hybrid styles where we spend decades of our life practicing to create speed paintings and rough character design sketches where you can create in a very short amount of time like 10 20 minutes you can just do a little pencil drawing of something and you it kind of looks finished enough it's never it's not that polished but it's enough to communicate the idea really effectively um, and often you need to kind of balance that. That's a lot of what concept art is about. So what you end up doing might need to be some super detailed thumbnail. It might need to be some hybrid concept style. It really exists for no other reason than to kind of ideate in these concept art frameworks. Or you might be able to get away with just a really quick, a super five second little thumbnail sketch. It's all a matter of providing value to the people around you and figuring out what they want. Some people might want to be included a lot earlier on. Some people might not be able to be included earlier on because they just don't really understand what the sketches mean. You need to be able to modify your approach based on what your expectations are. But I would say in the beginning, in most cases, the skill that you really need is the ability to produce thumbnails and rough preliminary images that look very close to the finished images you're making. And I think the more you do this, the easier it is to work with a wide variety of clients and make sure that you're including them in the process. They feel like they're confident that you're going to be able to produce something. And most importantly, you don't get someone saying, this is not what I imagined, redo it right at the end, which again has happened to me many, many times, which is why I have tried to develop such a kind of detailed preliminary process personally even though a lot of the work that i do isn't that detailed i really try and make sure i've got this sorted and that is what i'd recommend for you but anyway let me know if you are a professional whether you've got any thoughts additions to this you know how do you handle this particular process have you got any horror stories any good sort of tips for younger artists who are trying to get their head around this that would be really good i'm sure everyone would really appreciate the thought that you have so leave them down below uh, but other than that i'll catch you around happy drawing